Chuck and Bob with you as we get you ready for Saturday's regional action across the state of Indiana, down to 64 teams now in four classes. We'll start you off in Class 1A down at Triton. A lot of people expect Triton and Counts to wind up in the championship game of this regional, Bob, but Triton cannot afford to overlook a casting team, even though they whacked them pretty good in the regular season. Anybody that's alive in the regional round is dangerous because they put it together, especially at the end of the year. Casting is 10 and 15, and you'd wonder, like, you know, how do you get here? Well, you're playing your best basketball at this time of year. Uh, Kate Zeider has been uh, outstanding for them, 15 uh, points a game and uh, a couple of rebounds. They've also gotten good effort out of Sam Smith, uh, 10 plus points, and Joey Spin, uh, over nine points a game and running that offense for them, doing a good job defensively as well. They beat uh, North Newton, they beat Tri-County and North White to advance. Tri Triton has had a terrific season, 19 and five. Ashton Oviedo and Tyson Yates leading the offense. And the one thing you know about their coach, Jason Groves, he's been through a lot of these regionals before, so he knows how it works. They're 19 and five and a chance for another 20 win season mm -hmm. at Triton, which I think is just phenomenal. They got a great spirit down there. The kids want to be part of it uh, when they're young. And uh, you mentioned uh, Oviedo and Yates, but uh, uh, McIntyre and uh, Keegan and West Aver, uh, they're, they're just outstanding young men and they've been a big part of a team that beat West Central, they beat Oregon Davis, and they beat a good Argus team. So you get through that semifinal, then you got to worry about Couts and the Wireman brothers probably in the regional final. In 2A, the Lapel Regional has the same four teams that would have played last year except for the pandemic. And so you've got Rochester taking on Rossville. We'll talk about Rob Malco's team in a minute, but this Rossville team really felt like they were a contender for the state title last year. Didn't get the chance to play, so they got a little bit of chip on their shoulder coming into this. Yeah, they won 19 games last year, and then, had, like everybody else, had the rug pulled out from under them with the uh, pandemic. But they're 17 and 7 this year, and they've got some people back uh, from last year's team. They got three really good seniors, and uh, uh, Damon Shaw, and they've got uh, Luke Meek, and they've also got Jesse. Cornell all averaging in double figures and uh, again this is a team that uh, Corey Mann has put together and uh, doing a nice job. You take a look at this Rochester squad and the senior leadership that they have this year. Grant McCarter, Kyle Reinerts, Quinn Stasiak, all three of those guys in double figures by the way. It's a little wonder why Rob Malco's team was able to run the table in the Three Rivers Conference. By the way, uh, Corey Mann has gone back to radio, and it's Corey Dunn who's the head coach uh, for that team. But you're right about uh, Rochester. And again, you look at this uh, effort that Rob Malco has had over the years down there and turned out great teams. And uh, and the school just loves it. They rally around their kids. And they haven't been able to go to a lot of the games, but the Zebras are uh, wearing the same stripes they always do, and it makes them a good team. And uh, you mentioned some of their talent that helped them. They beat North uh, Newton, and they beat Lewis Cass. Uh, to advance to the regional, so uh, congratulations to Rob. And whoever wins that semifinal game, probably dealing with Luke Brown and Blackford in the championship game. Meanwhile, in 3A, we've got quite a few teams from the area representing. Northwood goes to Newcastle. Newcastle, 9-15, and 15, but uh, you can really get deceived by that record because they had a personnel adjustment, let's just say, in February. They had a player by the name of William Greiser that came back from a foot, devastating football injury. I mean, broken fibula, torn ligaments, dis dislocated ankle. He is kind of shown to be the glue of that Newcastle team, and the Trojans are a dangerous bunch. Give him credit for being patient and waiting for that to happen because they've uh, really done a, a nice job. Daniel Cox is in his eighth season as head coach, and Newcastle's a little bit of a different uh, animal than we perceived them years ago when Steve Alford and that yeah. group were there and they were playing with the big guys. They've got a 3A team now. They've still got 9,000 seats in their arena, but uh, this is a, a different group and they've been very successful. Uh, McDaniel, uh, Miller, uh, both uh, doing a good job scoring and, and they beat Delta and they beat Hamilton Heights in the sectional to advance. The good news for Northwood is Kent Benson isn't coming through that door. Steve Alford's not coming through that door. And Northwood, we've seen this young team evolve as the season has gone along. Brenner and Rash, those sophomore scorers, have done a great job. But I really think Ben Vincent, who you're going to see throw a nice pass here, has offered a lot of stability from the point guard slot. He's a veteran and he's a program kid, and you love to see that. You know, just show up every day, work hard, and uh, it'll come around, and he's got a great opportunity. They've got a lot of other people on this team who do a good job. Jamar Jackson, uh, you've got Weens, you've got Bontrager come off the bench. and uh, But Ian Rash and uh, Cade Brenner are going to be 
uh, force to be reckoned with for the next, few, uh, next couple of years. Let's take you to the 3A sectional at South Bend, Washington now. And as we mentioned at 1A, a lot of people expect, okay, it's going to be Triton and Cubs. A lot of people expect it's going to be seeing Joe and Hammond in the regional final. And Mark Johnson doesn't want to hear any of it because he says, if we don't take Twin Lakes seriously, we're going to be watching them play in the regional final, even though St. Joe hammered Twin Lakes in the regular season. Well, you know, we say uh, what we expect. I mean, a lot of people thought Adams and Marion would be alive at this uh, stage of the tournament, and they're not because uh, people stepped up and played well. And Twin Lakes has a veteran coach in Ken Adams. Uh, Ken Adams has uh, got 33 years as a head coach, Mark Johnson 36 years. So you're going to have some coaching experience. You got Johnson, you got Jackson, you got Arthur. This is a pretty good team from Twin Lakes to get to 21 and 4, but they only played one 4A team the entire season. Now, when you're watching the St. Joe highlights, of course, you see J.R. Kinesny, and everybody expects him to have a big day. Could wind up holding the all-time county scoring record. But as we saw last Friday in this game against Marion, Jack Fuda, who you just saw, and then Cole Hackovich burying threes. I mean, Will Terry was an iron man down on the rebounding. This is a team that really came together come tournament time. And we saw Mark Johnson in practice uh, really hitting on the idea of being tougher in this game, and I thought St. Joe really was, and then they had to be tough again against Glenn to uh, win the championship. But uh, Mark Johnson's got a nice team. We've said that all season, but he needed all of the engine pistons to be firing in, in this week when they played Marion and Glenn, and they got it done. And they'll need that again to emerge from the regional because the second semifinal has New Prairie taking on number one Hammond. And when you look at this New Prairie team, Yes, they're having their best season on, ever under Mike Bauer. Yes, guys like Braden Flagg and Ryland McBride had huge sectional weeks. But to me, Bob, the difference in New Prairie, the second half of the season has really been on defense. And they really get after you. And uh, again, you're talking about toughness here, but uh, give uh, credit to Ryland McBride, not only for his offense, but his defense as well. Hunter Smith is doing a great job. I like Grady Lapchinski not only to shoot the threes, but to get in the opposing point guard's face a little bit and, uh, and be tough. And uh, New Prairie stands for a 20-win season, and they beat Wheeler, they beat River Forest, they beat Hanover Central, the defending sectional champion to advance. Now, to get a 20-win season, they'll have to knock off the state's number one team. And when you look at the Hammond Wildcats under Coach Larry Moore Jr., they have a really nice senior triumvirate of Harold Woods, Daryl Reed and Reggie Abram, and they can get up and down the floor, but they can also get your grill. You know, we mentioned that Twin Lakes only played one 4A team. Uh, this is a little different here with Hammond. Yeah. They have played 13 4A teams in the course of their season, and their conference play you know, demands that they do that much like the NIC, but uh, that makes them just so tough, and they've been challenged a lot of times. But to be 17 and 1 is, is outstanding, and uh, when you look at their talent, they've got size, they've got ability, and they've got a uh, uh, tough uh, coach. Really impressed with what Larry Moore Jr. done with Hammond. Now, we'll be spending the day at the 4A Regional in Michigan City, and the first First game that we'll have for you at 2 o'clock Saturday afternoon, by the way, here on TV 46, be Riley and Valpo. Tempo such a key in this game because Valpo would like to keep it, well, I believe the con uh, symphony conductor would say Largo <laughs> and uh, Allegro for yeah. Riley. You got it up and down the floor for the Wildcats when they can. And I tell you what, they get a lot of transition baskets and the defense provides a lot of that. And that's going to be a big part of what they do because if they get in a half-court battle with this big team from Valparaiso, it's going to be tougher. I love what Philip Robles has done for Riley as far as uh, uh, shooting the basketball but also becoming a team leader. And uh, we know about Derek Wesley, no question. Uh, Blake Wesley. We know about Derek, too. Yeah, but <laughs> I keep going to Derek. Uh, Blake Wesley has done this year has been fantastic, and we've had a chance to enjoy his play. And he not only does it offensively, but defensively as well, and likes to turn it into a shot just like that. Yeah, we, we've seen Wesley, and we saw the development of Robles. I would also not count out the development of Davion Anderson, who just hit that shot, and Jackson Copley from the outside. And Riley will need all those guys firing on all cylinders because this Valparaiso team that they take on, whoo, do they have some size down low. You've got two defensive ends, the Jones brothers, Mason and Cooper, Big body guys that can dominate down in the paint. 
And then there's another Jones that they're not even related to, Colton, who sits outside and snaps three pointers. Yeah, it's a great tradition over there at Valparaiso, and I know that uh, Barry Coleman uh, really uh, values the contribution, not only from his team, but the former coaches. Skip Collins yeah. is involved, and uh, Virgil Sweet is involved, and they, and they all care about the community, so that's what these kids grow up in, and they want to be part of this. And uh, they get a discount because they had to put Jones on the back of a lot of warm-ups on this team. But they've got more than the Jones brothers, but uh, man, I'll tell you what, Valparaiso lost to Elkhart this season. They lost to Adams and lost to Munster, they lost to Northridge, and they lost to Hammond. But this is a team that uh, put together a 20-5 record, and uh, they're playing probably their best basketball of the year when you want to be. So Riley and Valpo, that's the first game that we have for you Saturday afternoon on TV 46. The second game has Elkhart taking on Gary West. Now, we saw the Elkhart Lions win the Elkhart sectional on Saturday night against Penn. And I really thought for Kyle Sears' team last week, everybody likes to talk about their transition game. I thought their half-court defense was amazing. It was, and it turned into points as well. But the thing I loved about it, it was very unselfish uh, in that when somebody got a chance to go down the floor, they weren't looking for my points, they were looking for our points. And then in the second half, they put on a display against a very disciplined Penn team. They uh, were passing the basketball. They weren't forcing any shots. They got to the free throw line, which we thought might be a little bit of a, a, a tough situation for them, but they hit uh, 13 free throws in the second half and came away with that hardware, which is great for Elkhart. They'll take on a Gary West team. I know you like to talk about who teams play. Man, Chris Buggs emptied out the travel budget this year for Gary West basketball. They played Castle, they played Lawrence North, they played Cathedral, and they beat some of those teams too. They have size in abundance. Two 6'9 guys and Jalen Washington, the Big Ten recruit, and Mason Nicholson, 6'5 Krishan Christmas, and a really unheralded guard, at least in my opinion, in Kumari Peterson. Kumari Peterson is the uh, the band leader of this uh, mm -hmm. this team, and they like to get up and down the floor. They like to create chaos, and especially in the middle of the floor, maybe force a turnover or two. But when they go, they can get their best and flush it down and finish strong. And so it's really going to be a, a challenge for Elkhart to play uh, a similar way, but within the control that they showed in that win over Penn. So if you want some Saturday afternoon basketball, TV 46, the place to watch it. Riley Valpo at two, Elkhart Gary West at four, and we hope you'll join us then. Now for the Hall of Famer, Bob Nagel, it's Chuck Freebie. Thanks for joining us on social media.